Um, hi, this is a question for AJ. Hi, AJ, it's Aisha here from iBoxing Hub. Um, all week people have been talking about your focus. What are the things that actually affect your focus? And I know um, previously you've spoken about your um, belief in God. Is that something that's affected your focus in, kind of in a positive way, obviously? In a positive way. So in terms of focus, when you're in training camp, you're around the same faces day in, day out for, let's say, 11 weeks. And then on the week of the fight, now you open yourself up to like media obligations, questions about your future, etc., etc. So one has to stay focused, even though he's now opening himself up to media obligations, the bright lights of Saudi Arabia, the boulevard, it looks really good, your family's traveling out here. I need to keep my mind on the fact that I'm here to do a job and I'm in for a serious fight. Um, but like with prayer, some people call it meditation, some people call it deep thinking. You keep your mind on track, keep focused. I call it prayer and I just pull myself back, put my feet on the ground and um, God answered my prayers today and I was victorious. I prayed for Wallen as well. I see him getting stitched up. He'll be all right and he'll return to fight another day. Thank you. Oh, hi there, dear. Rahul Gamir from Punch Out Boxing. I don't know if you remember about 18 months ago, uh, I put it to you that it could be prudent for AJ to forego the Usyk rematch to give him a chance to maybe have tune-ups where he can work on things without that extra jeopardy of fighting an elite fighter. Uh, do you think these three tune-ups this year, because of that activity that AJ's missed out on because of the championship level fights, do you think that's helped him? And question for, for Ben as well, uh, how many levels more do you think you can get out of AJ? Because unlike, say, Usyk, AJ has yet to probably reach his ceiling it looks like he's still improving in his 30s. Yeah, firstly, I'd like to say that Otto Wallin was number two with the IBF. You know, he was due to fight for the world title. So that's, uh, that's elite level. Um, you know, I think it says, every, it says everything that you, you almost look at Otto Wallin as a tune-up. That's because Anthony Joshua is at elite level. Um, but yeah, look, every fight's fight by fight. We had a fantastic camp. Great performance, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, AJ, uh, Eddie just said that the Deontay Wilder fight was signed. I mean, how disappointed and annoyed are you? You've done your job tonight, and you did it brilliantly. How annoyed are you that he didn't, and that fight now seems to be dead? I, I'm not too sure what can happen from here, but I'm sure from a fan perspective, they'll be more annoyed. For me, I always understand how this game is, it's, uh, you never know. This is elite level boxing. The day reckoning was an amazing card. Wilder just came up short, but he'll live to fight another day. Me and him could still get it on, we could still get it cracking. I believe I'm a massive threat. I still think Wilder's a threat and I still think it does amazing numbers if we get it on. But I'll leave that down to my management, trainers, promoters to make the decision. I'm down to fight anyone, whenever and whoever. Josh, because the Wilder fight was sort of more or less done as, as most of us knew, you weren't really being pestered about what would happen next. You weren't being asked about retirement. But two times in this week, you said, if I don't win Saturday, there's no future. W would that have been the end for you if you hadn't won tonight? Oh, no, not the end. Like, I think it's amazing what Parker done tonight. He came up short against Joe Joyce and he showed resilience. It pays off. Daniel Dubois came up short a few times, showed resilience, it pays off. You should only give up when that competition within yourself, that competitive spirit dies. So for me personally, I ha I'm, a, I'm a fierce competitor. You can ask my pals, like whether it's spelling games, whether it's chess, whatever it may be, Wordle, we all compete with each other. And um, I think that you should always try and find that winning streak again, even if you're coming up short a few times. So now, nah, the win pushes us onto higher heights. That's the great thing about boxing. But if you come short, definitely keep on striving for greatness if you're a competitor. So um, I would have never given up if, if I fell short today. No way. Sherry Abassi for TKL Boxing. Uh, Anthony, first of all, congratulations on the victory. Um, just wanted to ask... We've Sorry, I, I can't see... Yes, there you are. <laughs> Sorry. 
over the years we've been told you're quite an inquisitive person you like to know why not just do this and do that uh, obviously Beautiful. Ben Davison is known for his IQ and I, and I can't hear properly sorry louder yep. louder as loud, loud as you can oh, sorry um, I was saying Ben Davison's known for his IQ and sort of teaching people the little nuances um, how important has that been in this camp to teach you to sort of change a game and find that sort of killer instinct again because tonight we saw you throwing those right hands the, the pull counter all these little things that you've done previously against South Paws like Charles Martin when you won the world title how important has he been for you this training camp you know what's interesting I think Ben can answer that question a lot better than I can because he's a a vet no, no it's not a veteran because he's still young but he's a, a scholar of the game and when we spoke he saw what, I, what I've been trying to achieve in the business and you know when someone understands you and a light bulb comes on and you just finally get it and that was it so he he still pushed me towards trying to achieve what I'm achieving he hasn't tried to change me he still pushed me towards what I'm trying to achieve but he's done it in a way where because he knows boxing he knows what I'm trying to do and he knows how to get it out of me in a way he, you would have to ask him but I don't want him to say too much because <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's quite articulate and um, and will give away quite a lot as well but he he switched the light bulb on in me this, uh, this training camp and I want to give a thanks to to Ben Heine as well for for pushing me to go down to Harlow and train <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm not going down Harlow, bro. I'm staying at Finchley. <laughs> I was anti, like, I'm staying at Finchley, bro. And uh, we went down there, and I, and I appreciate your time as well. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Um, and I'm not going to say too much, but it's been good. It's been good, and I appreciate my team for pushing me in that direction. As you talk sports here, AJ, a lot of people have said the best version of you is when you stick it on opponents and you're strong and you're powerful. But tonight, you showed that you can be a smart boxer and you really picked him apart. Do you think that you proved that tonight? Once again, I'm not here to rate myself. This is another question that you would have to ask my team. But we spoke about what does it mean to stick it on someone? That means that anyone can come into the boxing gym and be a world champion or be successful. There's a lot more to it than that. And as I said, the light bulb has been switched on and uh, we're on the same page for sure. But in terms of was it good? Am I doing the right thing? I'm just following the instructions. You'll have to ask my team how they felt about my performance. Anthony, uh, Andrew McCullough, IFL TV. You mentioned earlier, you said, if you had the choice between three-time world champion or Deontay Wilder, you'd pick three-time world champion. Now, with Wilder no, so losing... Let me, let me explain that scenario to you. So let's say, for example, there was an option to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world or fight an opponent. I would always choose the heavyweight championship of the world because that is the creme de la creme, the most prestige title that you can win in boxing. Now, there is no title on the line. So if there's no title on the line, what does that mean? I'm going to fight Deontay Wilder. But that, the question that was asked is, what would you rather fight for? I would rather fight for the title. Now, the next question should be, but Anthony, there's no title on the line, so what would you like to do next? I would fight Deontay Wilder. So the question has to be correct in order to get the right answer. I, just, I answered the question. I didn't answer the way they wanted me to answer. I just answered the question that was provided to me. But I hope that clears up what the guy was trying to get out of me. But I've, I've, I've made it clear now is that I'm keen to fight anyone. Um, but this week was fully focused on Otto Wallin. Hi AJ, over, over here to your left, the German fans, the zone Germany, also Ring Life Germany. I guess you haven't seen the fight of Ajit against Aslanbek Mahmudov today, but I know you know him, so could you tell for the German fans what do you think about Ajit and his performance and also his future in this division? I've known Ajit for a long time. Me and Ajit have done many good rounds together in the gym, we work together. Um, I spar. Ajit's previous opponent, Agron, they had a great fight together. I know uh, Ajit is a fierce heavyweight in the division. I was going to fight Ajit if I wasn't going to fight the Day of Reckoning. We was in negotiations. And the reason why I wanted to fight him because he's undefeated. 
He's a great fighter. And I want to test myself and challenge myself and put my skills up against his skills. I think Ajit can go a long way if he stays dedicated, which I'm sure he will. And I'm sure me and him will meet very soon. Uh, this is a question. It's Gareth over here. To your right, Anthony. Go on, Gareth. Gareth Davis. Um, could I ask this question to both you, Anthony, and to Eddie? Um, it, it could well open up if Fury and Usyk fight on February the 17th that the IBF title is available and Flip Hergovic uh, obviously is mandatory for that. Is that a fight you would like next? Is Hergovic an opponent you'd like to fight for the IBF title to both Anthony and Eddie? Yeah, I mean, for me, firstly, Anthony always will make the final decision. He's always takes advice, but he's the boss and he'll make the decision. He wants to become a three-time world heavyweight champion. So that could be an option, but there is a lot to play out with the IBF. It's not just a case of on February the 18th, that belt will become vacant because it won't. Now, if we're all involved in a situation together, i.e. here, maybe it does become vacant. But listen, I have to be honest, I, w I would love to see him fight Tyson Fury. If Tyson Fury can beat Alexander Usyk, I would love to see him fight Tyson Fury. I love that fight. Um, I hope that Tyson can be triumphant in that fight, but we'll go away now. Obviously, going into tonight, we had our plans for March. Now we've got to reassess. Does he want to fight in March? We'll speak to Ben. You know, I know he'll want to stay active, I think, but I think he's in a wonderful position. I think that was a statement to say he's the man. Can you know, I, he's, the, he's the man to watch in can 2024. I, can I ask Anthony then, would he rather fight Tyson Fury? Oh, or, yeah, exactly. Don't put, don't put me in this position. <laughs> <laughs> would I well, rather fight who? It's a cute Tyson Fury. Would you like to fight Tyson Fury? Or who? Or Hergovic. Hundred <laughs> percent Tyson Fury, but I'm not dodging Hergovic, by the way. <laughs> I'll fight Hergovic as well. <laughs> Does that put Ben in a difficult situation? What's that? Does that put Ben Davison in an interesting situation? Big unnecessary questions. <laughs> unnecessary. Good night and thank you. <laughs> right, just a couple more guys before we wrap up. Hi, Anthony. Hello. I'm sure you'll be tuning in to watch Fury Usyk on, on the 17th. I just wondered if we could get your thoughts on, on what you think will happen. What do you expect to see? I'll, um, I'll try and be here. I tend not to go to many fights, but Saudi's putting on really good shows and that's an iconic fight, so I'll try and get out here with my team. I think it's going to be a really, really good fight. I'm, you know, I'm going to be straight up. I'm leaning towards Usyk. Um, but who knows? Who knows, isn't it? That's, they're both at the top of their game. I wish them well. I hope they have a great training camp. And once that fight's out of the way, the heavyweight division opens up again and all of us can start leading towards becoming champions. And I think to, I, I can't believe how great this card was. Um, so many potential matchups, potential future stars on the card. So 2024 is going to be a big year for the heavyweight division. So um, I'm leaning towards Usyk. I'll be out here potentially, and uh, I can't wait to see them fight. And uh, as I said, this card was amazing. It's going to showcase the next superstars of the heavyweight division. Yes, AJ. Congratulations with a win. Joel Bear here representing for TNT Sports. Uh, I want to talk about your preparation, right? So you came here, you were focused, a little bit short sometimes with the media. You just wanted to get it done and over with, right? Do you reckon that's probably the main reason why we saw you be the best that you've probably been in the last couple of years? Not necessarily. Um, not because not of the media. As the lady asked earlier, I, we have to stay focused and I'm not short with the media but I, I have to stay switched on I don't want to lose my my focus by coming out fight week and doing a load of media commitments now I will sit with you guys for hours no it's fine <laughs> no, no we got to go soon <laughs> but in terms of like the performance I put honestly I put that down to uh, the Ben Davison Academy man they got a great team and um, people like it's like, oh, Joshua, just throw punches. As I said, if it was like that, everyone would be a champion. But they, they, worked, they work extremely hard. And they, as I said, the light bulb switched. And um, I've been searching, 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 searching. And I'm really impressed with what they brought to the table. Um, as I said, they're very articulate, attention to detail, just like myself. And I just want to do well. 
and they helped me do well tonight. And if you're going to call that my best performance, um, I want to give thanks to, to the Ben Davidson Academy. Come on now. Uh, AJ, David here. Yep. How's David it going? Loka. <laughs> Cheeky. Come on. Uh, first of all, uh, just a major congratulations on the uh, victory today. Thank you, sir. Um, we spoke a couple of months ago and you stressed how much you wanted to fight three times this year. We're all glad that you did. Uh, can we expect that same level of activity in 2024? Well, yeah, for me, I would love to speak to the team. It's a great, like, it's a great question to ask my team. Ben, Fred, Ed, do you want to fire away and speak about what, what the plans are? I've got a great team that look after me and take care of a lot of things where I can just focus on being the best fighter I can be. So if anyone else wants to lead that, lead that question. Yeah, I, th I think we'll, we'll all talk together as a team. I think it was so refreshing to see you fight three times this year because with the belts and with COVID and with mandatories, it's so difficult to get that activity. And I think that was a big plus. And we want to thank Saudi Arabia as well and His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh because it looked like December was going to pass us by. Thanks. And we got a, a call with six weeks to go against a tricky southpaw. And AJ and Ben and Fred, they just said, yep. And, you know, without this opportunity tonight, we wouldn't have got those those three fights in 2023. So we'll sit down as a team with 258 and Ben and then map out. But, you know, having fought on December 23 with a plan to fight in March or whenever, three fights can definitely be an option for 2024 as well. Right, guys, last question, okay? Yes. Hi, I'm Najis from NBC Channel. Tell us about the support that given to you from your family and your friends and how affected positively and by the way your smiling is so beautiful stay <laughs> smiling me, me or Eddie? you you uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, yes. you and Eddie I forgot the question now <laughs> was that one to me? <laughs> is that about my smile? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? it was the effect of your friends and family um, to okay the look Saudi Arabia is amazing yeah they had a great time so they had so much to do that they wasn't really worried about me. And uh, they enjoyed the event. The, the whole card was phenomenal. So they came, they had a good time. My family's actually became boxing fans. Some of my family have fought before and some of them haven't. And the ones that haven't actually enjoyed the show, the whole setup. So they let, they let me focus. They understand that even though their nephew, brother, son, cousin, whatever it may be is fighting, it's not just entertainment, he needs to focus. And um, they leave me to do my job and we'll catch up another time. So yeah, I wanna say thank you to Saudi Arabia. Also, I wanna say thank you to David Gansar from 258 Management. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize he was so loved. <laughs> Stand up, my busky. <laughs> yeah, we're pulling this show together. You know, last minute, you've done your thing. Um, I appreciate you so much. Honestly, thank you so much for pulling the show together, getting us back on that gravy train. Um, anybody looking for management from any walks of life in sport, shout out 258 Management. They do a great job. I recommend them. And uh, I think that's the wrap now. Yeah? Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you. Yeah. What an end to 2023. Merry Christmas. We'll see you all in 2024. God bless. <laughs>